Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of the Bungie Cord mini series. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make a plugin for the Bungie Cord proxy series server. Sorry. The interesting thing about this is that rather than run it on a bucket server, it actually runs on the Bungie Cord server, which means that it is accessible on all of the servers and it goes through Bungie Cord. Um, Bungie Cord provides a really cool API that allows you to make um, plugins to do all kinds of different things, uh, and it's infinitely more powerful than what you can do with Bucket. Rather than having to send those weird messages, there are actually objects and nice things set up. So we'll go ahead and get started in it. First thing that you need to know is that this does not in any way, shape, or form involve Bucket. I'm never going to have Bucket on the class path. We're never going to use a class from Bucket. When we go ahead and do the coding, it's going to look similar to Bucket, and some of the classes will have the same name, uh, but they are not the same at all. So don't think that you can just copy your Bucket code and paste it in because there are some very important differences. So it'll look similar, but it is definitely different. First thing we want to do is go to Properties, Command, or Control-I on the project once you've created it. Go to the Build Path, Libraries, you know how to do this, but this time we want to actually add Bungie Cord. This is the Bungie Cord that, as you can see, on the Bungie Cord server, Bungie Cord right there, because um, by adding Bungie Cord, we can get access to the API. Um, next, we'll go ahead and create a new class, and this is going to be the plugin class. So we'll go ahead and just call this Bungie PM. By the way, I forgot to mention, but what this is going to be is it's going to be a um, plugin to send private messages through Bungie Cord. Um, so if you want to talk to someone who's on a different server but still within the Bungie network, you just type in their username, it'll find whatever server they're on, and then it'll send the message to them there. So just private messaging that works on any server. If you use a regular private message plugin, then it'll only work on that one server, but this one actually goes through Bungie Cord. Now you could accomplish the same thing in a bucket plugin um, by using the plugin message channel to um, send the information through, uh, but this is just another way of doing it, and I think it's personally a lot better for many reasons. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is this Bungie PM class here is going to extend plugin. Now you'll notice that when I import this, it's net.md5.bungie.api.plugin.plugin. This has nothing to do with the bucket plugin class, or I believe in bucket it's actually an interface, but that has nothing to do with this. This is the equivalent of Java plugin, and if you take a look, there's actually a lot of similar things. Like, for example, um, there is a public void on enable, which is called when the plugin is enabled. So, so far it looks almost identical to bucket, uh, but it's a little bit different. Um, so we're going to go ahead and write the on enable, and this is going to have one command. Now the command system works a little bit different here. Um, so first let's go ahead and create the actual class, which we're going to call PM command. You can call it whatever you want. Now in this case, instead of um, implementing command listener or just having our public boolean on command in the Java plugin class, we're going to actually make this extend command. So command is actually a class. And then if you look, you'll get this red line because we need to have the constructor and then the method. Now there are two different constructors here. Um, the first constructor just takes in the name of the, or the like command, not the name, but what you actually type in. So in this case, it would be bungee pm. So I could just give it that. Uh, if I want to be more specific, this is the permission. So bungee pm dot use. And then after that, I can specify any aliases that I want. So I'll just say BPM for Bungie PM. Um, so that's for the constructor. You'll notice that we also need one method, which I'll go ahead and let it do. It's public void execute, command sender, sender, and string array args. Now this looks very similar to the on command method, uh, but it does not take in a command CMD since this class extends command. Um, and it does not take in the string command label, because again, this class is the command. Uh, it doesn't work like bucket, and it's a void, not a boolean. I think it's stupid that bucket makes it a boolean, but... Um, 
so we have this execute, and then this is what's called when it's actually executed, same thing as the on command. So that's where we're going to actually do all of the work, but first, let's go to the on enable, and we need to register the command. Now in bucket, I think you would do get command, whatever the name is, dot set executor, new pm command, but in this case, we're actually going to go ahead and write proxy server, this is the equivalent of bucket, so dot get instance, this is the same thing as bucket dot get server. This returns the bungee cord version of the server, and you'll notice that a lot of um, things in here are this are very similar, like getting a player, um, getting all of the players, and you know changing a bunch of uh, different things. So, but again, this is not at all affiliated with the bucket um, version, the bucket server. Uh, so it is different. So in this case, we're going to say um, we're going to say get plugin manager which again is just like bucket and we're going to say this time register command because in this case you actually register the commands the plugin is this and then the command is a new pm command this is a different way of doing it than bucket and i personally prefer it this way because we're registering the command um, and then when we give it this data when when a command is run it matched to this data here and then if it is then the execute method is called I personally prefer this and this is what I would do uh, but that's beside the point so this is all that we need to do in the plugin class we just need to register the command so now let's actually go ahead and do all of the work in the command class um, so the way that this is going to work is you run the commands you type the BPM then you type the name of the player and then the message and then it'll attempt to find the player and send the message so uh, we're first going to say if args.length is less than 2, uh, then they obviously haven't specified enough things. Um, sender does have a send message, but you'll notice that the ones that take in a string or a string var args are deprecated, and it actually wants you to use these base components. I'm not completely sure exactly what this whole system is, uh, but what I do know is that in this case you want to use a text component and then the constructor just takes in text. So make sure that you implement or you import the um, uh, text component and then you can just put in the text. Uh, now they also, as far as chat colors, there's also a chat color uh, enumerator. This is not the bucket one, but it works the same way. So chat color dot red, and then we'll say um, slash BPM um, player message. So that's how you send a message. Rather than just sending it as a string, you make a new text component with whatever you want to send. I don't completely understand the point of that, but I think that you can have like other types of components for more complex messages. Um, so I'm not 100% sure there. Uh, if anyone knows or if you want me to look into it, I could because uh, there are a lot of different things in this API and I'll probably make another video before I finish the series with more of this stuff. Okay, so at this point we now know that they have definitely typed in at least um, a player and then at least one word in the message. So now let's actually go ahead and try to get the player. So we're going to say proxied player P. Remember, this is proxied player, not player. It's they, uh, Bungie calls it a proxied player. Is equal to proxy server dot get instance dot get player. You can either give it a uh, the name or the UUID. In this case, we obviously want it to be the name since we're not saving anything, and it's going to be args zero. One important thing that I'm going to um, note here is um, this. Uh, when, when I'm talking about a proxy here, when you connect to, um, the way that this works is when you connect to the Bungie Cord server, it connects you to the correct server, but then all data between you and, between your client and the server is intercepted by Bungie Cord and then handled. So that's the way that these commands work. They're not running on one server, but if I try to run a command, then Bungie Cord will intercept my attempt to run the command, and then it will, um, actually handle it instead of allowing the server to handle it with a plugin. That's why if you try to run this command on the Bungie console or in game, it will work, but if you try to run it from the console of a bucket server, it will not work because that command request is not intercepted by Bungie cord and it's not handled. I hope that makes sense. It's just uh, kind of interesting. So if P is equal to null, so obviously if they don't exist, um, then we want to send them a message. Uh, with this text component, and we'll say could not find player arg zero, period. So if the player doesn't exist, then we will obviously let them know. Um, at this point, we now need to figure out the message. So we're going to say 
uh, string builder msg is equal to new string builder. Um, and now we're just going to build the message. So we're going to say for int i is equal to 1. We want to skip the first argument, which was the player, and start at the second one. i is less than args.length i plus plus msg dot append args i dot append space. So we're appending each argument uh, or each you know word of the message followed by a space, and then we're going to say string. We'll just call this builder msg builder msg builder, and then we'll go ahead and say string msg is equal to chat color dot translate alternate color codes. This is the same name, like there's also a method of this in the bucket version of the chat color and it's also here. So we're going to replace all of the ands um, with the correct chat colors and then the string is going to be msg builder dot two string dot trim. So what we're doing here is we're getting um, the string and then by trimming it we're removing this last space because it's going to append one more space than there are words. It'll append a space, but by trimming it, we're removing that last space. And then we're translating the color code. So if I type in and B hello, then it'll translate it to be um, aqua or blue, and then the word hello. So that's the message. Then we'll go ahead and say p dot send message. And of course, it wants a component, so a new text component. Um, so we'll put a prefix bpm. And then we'll put in sender.getName, the name of the sender, and then we'll put in the message. So it'll say prefix BPM, then the name of the sender of the command, then colon space, and then the message. And then we'll also go ahead and do this for the sender so that they know that it's working. So both the sender and the receiver will get a message with the prefix, the name of the sender, and then the uh, message. You could, we could be, um, more specific and you know write the name of the sender and the receiver um, but I think that by having that BPM prefix you can obviously tell that it's a private message okay so I think that that's all that we need to do for the command um, one other thing that you need to note is that you do need a plugin.yml it is in YML format and if you look at it it looks pretty much the same as the um, bucket version it has the name the main class the version, the author, and the description. One important thing is you do not need to register the commands in here because when you call register command here, then that takes care of it. And here's where you give the name, the permission, and then any of the aliases. So there's no need to register it in the plugin.yml, which is one of the best parts of using a command system like this versus the way the bucket has it. So the plugin.yml should look like this, just like a standard bucket one without any uh, registered commands and no registered permissions. I don't believe you can register permissions. Uh, by doing this bungee we're registering the permission that goes with this command, and I'll show you how the permissions work, because you can't just add the permission with a bucket permissions plugin. Okay, so to go ahead and export this, we want to export it, obviously, to the Bungie Chord server. So we go to the Bungie Chord server, then we go to Modules, and you'll see that there's already here the Alert command, the Find command, the List command, the Send command, the, the Server command, and then this Reconnect YML. I don't know why this Plugins folder is here, but you definitely want to export it to this Modules folder, uh, because that's where everything else is, and it does work there. So now it is exported, and... Let's go ahead and give it a try. Before I give it a try, actually, uh, if we go ahead to the Bungie Cord server and open up the configuration, I think I glossed over this uh, in the first video, but if you look here, this is where all of the permissions are. So, um, right, rather than using you know Group Manager or Permissions EX and then adding um, the command, I don't believe, or adding the permission, I don't believe you can do that. So you would actually want to do it here. And we're going to add this to default since anyone really should be able to use this. And I believe that the permission was bungiepm.use. So now this is how you would add the permission, and now they all have the permission. Now they all have the bungiepm.use permission so they can actually use it. So now let's go ahead and quit out of that. Let's go ahead and start up both servers. I'll show it to you on both servers. Um, I'll have both servers running and then I'll connect. Let me just get rid of status sign so it's not 
running. So I'm going to start server A, then I'll start server B, and I can um, verify that it does work in both cases. I can send it from the um, Bungie console, and then it will still be received on any server. Okay, so now both of those servers are running. Let's go ahead and start up the uh, Bungie Cord server. And that one's really fast. Okay, so Minecraft, I already have Minecraft open. Let's go ahead and connect to Bungie. And as you can see, says it couldn't can contact the login servers. Hmm. Cannot contact the login servers. Are they down? That is a good question. Um, hang on one second, I'm gonna look at this. So, um, I just now got this nice message, which basically says in Spanish, the authentication servers are down for maintenance. So I went ahead and put the Bungie server in offline mode um, by setting it in the Bungie cord configuration. Okay, so now I have actually joined, and as you can see, I'm on server A. So let's go over to Bungie cord. First of all, I'll show you if I try to run this BPM command, you'll see that it doesn't work because when I run it here, that command request is not intercepted. But when I run the command in the Bungie cord, um, console, or if a player runs it, then it will actually work. So let's go ahead and try it. BPM. You'll first see that it does say in red, BPM, player, and message. So let's try actually sending it to, first of all, pogo stick, which is obviously doesn't exist. Hi. And as you can see, it says could not find player pogo stick. So that part does work. Pogo stick's not anywhere. Let's say that we want to send it to pogo stick 29. As you can see, it showed up in both places, BPM, then console, which I guess is the name given to the console, and then it says hi. Now, I don't believe that I can um, also send it. Yeah, I can't send it from here. You could hard code it so that if I type in console, then it would automatically send it to the console, uh, but I'm not going to do that. So the console can send it while I'm on server A. Let's go over to server B. I don't know why I'm underwater. Let's set the time to zero, and as you can see, here's our sign that we are on server B. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and run it again, and as you can see right here, after I join the game, it says hi. So no matter which server I'm on, I re still received the message. And just to show you, if I do BPM on here, I guess I already did show you, it does also work for players. So that's all for this video. This is how to make a bungee, uh, bungee cord command. Um, so you can write a command that this plugin works with bungee cord, it has nothing to do with bucket, and it runs on bungee cord, which means that once it's running on that proxy, any servers that you add ever will automatically have this functionality on them, and if you want to update it, then you only update it on that one server, you don't have to copy it onto every single server uh, on which you want that functionality. So there's a lot of um, cool things like that, but obviously it can't work with um, the Great Bucket API, so you would use the previous video if you wanted to incorporate Bungie Cord into Bucket. So that's all for this video. This is how to make a Bungie Cord command. Um, I believe that you can do, there's like a listener system, um, and there are some other little you know pieces of the API. So I think that before we finish, I'm going to do at least one more video that shows off another piece of the API other than just a command. Um, I'll probably look into like all of this uh, handling with this server connector and the downstream bridge. There might be a way to um, uh, hook into that and then kind of listen for events there. Um, so as always, if I didn't say this, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button. And see you guys soon. Bye.